Welcome to Tech Love Hate. I'm Craig Mason. And I'm the lovely and talented Tish Lindsay. And we're here to help you with all of your tech issues. And keep you up to date on the ever-changing technology and new gadgets without getting all techy on you. On this episode, we'll be discussing touchscreen phones that are available without having to pay extra for a data plan. We'll also be discussing the new motion controllers that are coming out for the Sony PlayStation 3 and the Xbox 360. They'll be trying to compete with the Nintendo Wii. Ooh. And finally, we'll be discussing who should consider buying an iPad and who should just hold off on the purchase. Let's start things off with touchscreen mobile phones. If you've been wanting to buy a touchscreen but were put off by having to buy a bunch of extra costly data plans to go with it, then we've got some good news for you. Sprint and Nextel now have three or four touchscreen phones that are available without having to purchase a data plan. They even have an Android phone, which gets me really excited. Sweet! There are basic touchscreen phones from Samsung and LG, but today we are going to focus on the Motorola Android phone called the i1! Actually, that's the letter I and the number one, i1. Oh. i1. Now, I have personally been wanting either an iPhone or an Android phone for quite some time, but that monthly data charge has been making me go running and scream the other way. So when I heard that Sprint has an Android phone that doesn't require that monthly data plan, I am so excited about that. It's pretty cool. And it's kind of a pimped out little phone. It has a five megapixel camera and camcorder and built-in Wi-Fi so you can access the internet from any wireless network. Score! Because this is an Android phone, you have access to the Android app market where you can choose from literally tens of thousands of extra apps for your phone. Now, the Moto i1, or i1, as I like to call it, is not a top-of-the-line Android phone with all of the cool kid features of, say, the Motorola Droid. But it is a really good phone, and again, it's the only choice for getting into an Android without having to pay all that extra money for extra data plans. Hi, welcome to the Sprint store. Can I help you? Hi. Yeah, I need some help. Like, I have this phone. It's obviously pretty basic. Yep. Yeah, it was just a gift from my grandma. Mm -hmm. But I don't have the heart to tell her I can't use it. So I'm just going to buy my own phone. Yeah. She'll never know. So I was thinking about buying one of those touchscreen phones, mm -hmm. like an iPod. Like an I iPhone? I mean, iPhone. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Something like that. What would yeah. you suggest? Well, you can only get the iPhone at the AT&T store. I'm at Sprint. Uh, yes, at Sprint, <laughs> I'm so sorry. But that's quite all right. Um, we have what are called Android phones, which are oh. very similar to the iPhone. They look very similar and they work very similar. Hmm. Yeah, I've heard about those. I think that's the one I'm interested in. Tell me more. Well, with an Android phone, it's basically a little computer in your pocket. Uh, what you've got is the entire face is a touch screen, and if you go like that, you go to a different page. Holy cow! And you can click on the App Store, <gasps> and there are tens of thousands of different apps that you can buy. Uh, games, um, to-do lists, whatever little app you would need that functionality for, you just click it and buy it, or a lot of it is actually free and it adds more functionality to your phone, puts an extra little icon on your screen, and you can just tap it and you're in your app using it. Holy mackerel! Yeah, and then if you need to use the phone function, you just press the little phone and dial by pressing the numbers right on the screen. And it takes pictures too? Yeah, it takes pretty high res uh, photos and videos. No way! Yep. You can edit the videos and the photos right on your phone and then click a button, send them off to YouTube or to Flickr or whatever. No way! Yeah. So I could go on my favorite site, techlovehate.com? Yeah. Really? You could, indeed you could. Oh, I'm sold. Next up, the new motion controllers that are coming out this fall for the Xbox 360 and PS3. If you've ever wanted to play baseball by swinging a virtual bat. Or golf by swinging a virtual club. The Wii was pretty much your only choice. 
Now the PS3 has had motion control built into it from the start. Right in their controllers was motion control, but you're holding the controller with two hands. Kind of limits how you can move with it, so it wasn't really very well supported. Well, have no fear. Just in time for the holiday season, the PlayStation Move and the Xbox 360 Connect will soon be hitting store shelves. Now, the two different motion control technologies are very different. The PlayStation Move uses a handheld controller that senses motion, left, right, up, down, back, forth, and it also has a camera that tracks a little glowing ball on top of the controller. So it's very precise and it's one-to-one. -one. When you move like this, what's happening in your hand is also happening in real time on the screen. So if you have an archery game and you're pulling your controller back like this, that string is pulling back on the screen in real time. Let go, real time. Huh, that sounds super fun. Yeah. Hmm. Well, the Xbox 360 is a little bit different in that it uses multiple cameras to track full body motion with no controllers at all. Now that sounds pretty cool. It is cool, but there is a drawback to that. There's a lag, so it's mm. not real time. There's a slight lag, so the, the games are gonna be a little bit different. How so? Well, because it's not in real time, it would be difficult to, to do a game that had like a fast sword swipe uh, or something like that because there would be you'd be like this and then you'd see you the gamer, that later gotcha. on the screen. Okay. Even if it's just a half second, that would affect your gameplay. Absolutely. So the games for the Kinect are just going to be more casual in nature, more like the Wii games. Hmm. I'm sold. Now, if you don't currently have a Nintendo Wii and are thinking about buying one, you might want to hold off because the Move has some pretty compelling games. Mm -hmm. They've showed a lot of them that are coming out, and I'm really excited now. The Microsoft system, the Kinect, they haven't told us a whole lot about the games that are coming out. So we're going to have to reserve judgment until we get closer to the release date. Okay. So, have patience, young Jedis. As soon as more information is available on both systems, you know we'll be right back with our recommendations, our reviews, and some inside tips. Next up, the iPad. We've touched on it in the past, but we've been using it for a couple months now and we're able to give you a better informed recommendation. And as your trusty Geek Speak translator, I will break down for you what an iPad really is and who really should get it. Basically, an iPad is an in-between device. It's more than an iPod touch, but it's not exactly a full computer. Now the iPad is for people who don't want to lug around a laptop, but who need more than what their phone can do for them. I mean, how much typing can you do on your little phone? Yeah. Um, the iPad has a full-size on-screen keyboard, and it runs Apple's own iWork, which is an office suite that is compatible with Microsoft Office. So like we've talked about in past shows, the iPad does not support Flash-based websites. So it may not be a huge deal for some people, but it is just something to think about. Also, there's very limited printing. There are a few wireless printers out there, you can count them on one hand, that do have drivers that allow you to print wirelessly from your iPad. Very few printers. Now, Apple has stated that in an upcoming upgrade to their operating system, they will support more printers. So it won't be an issue in the future, but at this point, it still is. But for now, you must send your files to another computer to print, unless you just so happen to have one of the few supported printers. Check out the show notes after the program to get some more information on that. Now, we've touched on some of the reasons that might prevent you from considering an iPad. Now we're going to talk to the people who truly should consider buying an iPad. Well, for my money, if you are a parent of a toddler or young child, you should definitely consider getting an iPad for a few reasons. First thing is, there's tons of apps for young kids. And the thing that's different from a standard computer is that the touchability makes it really, really easy for them to navigate. Secondly, it's really convenient. It's small, you put it in your diaper bag, you're good to go. Hours of entertainment. Much better than hauling 16 library books around. I know. Now, as Tish mentioned, there are tons of apps available for kids for the iPad, and a lot of those apps are free. 
Now, anything from reading to spelling to numbers, science, math, anything you can think of, there are apps in those subjects available for, for the iPad. Okay. Now, the thing that's revolutionized my life is Netflix streaming. Whenever we're out and about, say we go to a coffee shop and there's Wi-Fi there, I can start a video and she can be watching it while I'm having my morning Java. Also, shopping. Grocery shopping with an iPad is simply amazing. Attach this to your handlebar while you're shopping, your kid is playing and learning. That alone is worth the price of admission. Now, when your little bundle of joy isn't busy becoming the next Einstein, there are plenty of super fun things that adults can do with the iPad. So many, in fact, we couldn't possibly cover them all here, but here's some highlights. The ebook reader that comes with the iPad puts the Kindle to shame. Now, if you really like the Kindle interface, there's the Kindle app that Amazon makes for the iPad. Okay. And any Kindle books you've previously purchased come right into the iPad. Nice. So here's my personal favorite thing about the iPad. If you do a lot of selling on sites like Craigslist or yard sales or have home-based businesses like Mary Kay or Pampered Chef, you are going to love this. You can actually process credit card payments right from your iPad. How cool is that? You can, with the free Square Up credit card swiper, actually swipe and charge credit cards for a really low transaction fee. How cool is that? So. Here's a feature that all my girls and some of my boys who won't care to admit it will really, really love. The iPad has built-in GPS functionality. And if you get the 3G version, you can connect wherever you are. The other really cool thing about it is the 3G version is month to month, so there's no contract to worry about. You pay for the service when you need it. Yay! The iPad is also a really amazing gaming system, especially for those who love casual games. At this point, there are hundreds of really incredible games available for the iPad and more coming out each month. So when you're not using it for serious work or teaching your kids, it's a really great distraction. Now for me, having this iPad has completely eliminated my need to carry around a laptop. It does everything I need to do when I'm out and about, not in front of my home computer. So for most people, it's a really good alternative to having a laptop as long as you can live with a few of its shortcomings. Hmm. It's pretty cool. And as usual, guys, we'll have all the information that we've discussed today in the show notes section on the website. And finally, please click on our recommendations tab. When you purchase one of our recommendations or start a search here and buy something on Amazon through this site, you help keep this show going. That does it for this week. And remember, if you love what technology can do for you, but hate what it does to you, techlovehate.com. Bye.